about React Fellows, we all love React for the component-based approach. But once the application grow larger, we would get the troublesome when start passing the props around or sharing it among multiple components. For a better approach, we would discuss a JavaScript library for the state management, Redux. So Redux would introduce a better system to manage and share the global state among different components for the React application. And by the way, my name is Alia. Let's start our journey in the fundamental of Redux today. So let's get started with Redux. And in this tutorial, we would introduce the latest version of Redux, which is Redux Toolkit. So first thing first, what is Redux? This is a global state management library for the JavaScript applications. While Redux is quite popular with the React applications, it is not really it is not limited to React only. Other than that, if you use Redux with any um, component-centric application, you can see the benefits from one single storage. Now let's discuss about the key features of Redux. It would provide the predictable state updates. That means even before you can run the function and see the returned data, you can kind of predict what kind of data would be the result. Also, because Redux provide one single piece of data, it comply with a single source of truth. And once all the data inside the application united in one place, it would be easier for you to debug and monitor the data. Also, Redux come from some browser support for the developer tools. So you can debug in real time, as well as you can monitor the state while the application is running. Now let's get into the Redux toolkit. This is the latest version of Redux, which provides a streamlined way to write the Redux logic. If you are uh, familiar to the old version of Redux core, you might realize that to set up the Redux system with Redux cores, you might need to install some extra libraries with lots of code boilerplate. So with the new introduction of Redux Toolkit, you would have a more simplified approach to set up the whole store within few lines of code. So before we get into monitoring the codes, let's check out the architecture of Redux Toolkits and other core concepts. For example, if you are building one component-based application, and you want to have a single storage for all the shared data inside your application, then at this point of time, we can start to set up the Redux. You can imagine the Redux store as like a library system and the information desk, which contain all the data or control all the operations inside the library would be called a store all the central information. So under the central information system, we have many specific sections responsible for the specific information and tasks. For example, under the library, you might have a section for books, which you can retrieve the whole collections of the books. Also, you can perform some other operations like adding, removing or updating the books. Also, you can have a section dedicated to the user's manager. And in this case, you can perform all the operations related to users, as well as you can get the collections of all the user's information from the store. So you also have the loans section where you can manage all the information and operations to check in and check out the books. The ways of setting up the different uh, sections would help your code to increase the readability. And also it is easier to 
um, define the bug and detect any problems in the early state. So under the concept of Redux, we called these a specific manager as reducer. So reducer would be responsible for storing data for a specific section. And in case it receive a certain request, it would also update the shape of data. Reducer would receive the request via a function called a dispatch. And the request would look like in the form of JavaScript object with type and some payload data, which is so-called an action. So when we need to perform certain data update, we send an action via the dispatch function into the reducer. And based on the action type and the payload contained in the action, the reducer would be responsible for updating the shape of the books collections, for example. And now let's say that we have the whole application system set up. We need to connect our application to this central point of data so we can interact with all the data source. Uh, then our application would get some method from the Redux and Redux Toolkit to connect with the store. And then we would get um, two hooks from another library, which is designed for React to work with Redux. And we have a two hook called uh, use dispatch and use selector. Use dispatch is used to send the action to the store so that the store will again send the action to the corresponding reducer and the reducer would update the data per request. Then we have use selector. This hook is used to retrieve the data from the store. Once you call up this um, hook, the store would get the uh, selected data and return to uh, the variable you use to contain the result of this function. Now we can start seeing all of this concept in code. So first step, we would need to have the reducer and the action as well. And in Redux Toolkit, you don't need to uh, create the reducer and set of actions separately. But rather than that, you have a concept of a slice. This is a method to create the reducer and the actions for that reducer at the same time. Let's look at the code. We have the reducer and several methods to update the initial state of our host store. And this method, it would base on the action received to carry out the corresponding algorithm. Then finally, we export the reducer and the actions for the later use. Uh, similarly, we have the uh, slices created for the users and for the loans as well. Now we have created all the reducers and the actions for the corresponding reducer. The next task would be integrate all of these reducer into the centralized system, or in this case, a store, so that we can connect our application to this one point of data source. Uh, to create the store and use all the uh, codes suggested in the slides, you would might need to install uh, several packages, or if you just start your project from fresh, you can use the template suggested in the slides as well. So let's get back into the store and see how we could create it. Store would be created by the method called configure store we import from the libraries we have uh, installed previously. And the store would be a group of different reducers. And in this case, all the information, as you can see, would be combined into one single source of truth, which is the store. Now we have the store. We have defined all the specific sections, the methods, 
and the algorithm how to update the data. The uh, next step would be to connect our application to this data source. And to connect the application to the data source, again, you would need to import the methods you have um, you, you get from the libraries called React Redux in the previous installation step. And we need to grab our main application component into a provider tag and inject the store object inside. So the store object in here, we have got it from the um, store variable exported from the previous file, as you can see on the screen. Now the whole application has been connected to the central information system. We can actually use the store or interact with the data inside the store from all the components inside the application using the hooks called use dispatch or use selector. So uh, let's look at the code above. This is a component called the books component. This component is used to display the collections of books and it has also the functionality to create uh, a new loan and add it into the loan section of our store. So first of all, to get all the information about the books, it needs to use the use selector hook and inside this function, you would need to provide an expression to get to the corresponding states. So for example, uh, you get to the state and get to the properties called books. And this one would return the data of the books reducers. And now we have stored the books, um, books property inside the variable so they can use some function to display it in the component later on. We have a function to also dispatch the action to create a loan, suggesting that to dispatch a loan, you would need to have user ID and the ID of the book you want to borrow. So to perform the dispatch action, or let's say to send a loan request to the store, we need to use the hook called use dispatch. And this one would give us back a function to um, literally send the action to the store. So the store based on the action would decide which reducer is responsible and what should that redu reducer do. And in this, uh, in, in this case, the loan reducers, once it receives the borrow book action via the dispatch method, it might adapt and create the loans. So in this uh, simple algorithm, we just add the loans into the loans collection. So that is a simplified version of how the Redux system work and how it would connect the app and communicate all the information from the store back to app and then how to interact with the actions from the components. I hope that it would give you the overview of working with Redux. And I would highly suggest you to still keep practicing building the components and applications using the Redux store. So it would soon get master with these course concept and architecture. Thank you for your attention and hopefully we would meet again in other tutorial.